If anybody out there can see me and hear me, go like that, please. Oh, you can. Fabulous. Beautiful. All right. So I guess, well, let me see. Am I running this thing? Okay. Fabulous. All right. I just lost me, but the heck with that. All right. Let's get back to this. All right, guys. Uh, well, first off, thanks for being on the call. I can see some of you. I didn't know I was running this thing, but I guess I am. So I'm going to step up and roll with it. So, uh, <laughs> okay, great. So here's where we're going to roll. First off, grab something that you can write with right off the top. So because I'm going to give you a couple things uh, to write down. You know how I roll. So you don't just, you know, have a good time while we're here. And while you're doing that, um, hey, let me back up here. And I guess there is no moderator and I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to take some questions. So if you have questions uh, from what I understand, I'm going to be able to see them uh, on the right hand side. I have to be honest with you. I am not usually the one moderating these things. Um, I do a lot of them, but there's usually somebody else doing it. And, uh, and uh, I'm your guy here today. So, if you have that, if you have questions, how about somebody type me a question or type me a message, just type something in because I'm looking here on the right hand side, like she said to me and uh, hang on, save chat. Here we go. History. I see something on the side here. Um, pause. Uh, there we go. Okay, so somebody type me, just say hello, Joseph, or something so I can see where these questions pop up, please. Somebody type something in, if you would. And uh, I will see where it says mute on, mute on, more, blah, blah, blah. I don't see it. I don't see where the questions will be. Hang on one second. Under chat bubble. To Terry. Okay, I see that more. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start yakking, and hopefully that will show uh, show up because I see chat, chat bubble. And thank you for your patience, everybody. Um, again, I didn't know that I was going to be facilitating this thing. Oh, I see. That's why. Close. There we go. All right. I see it. Hey, everyone. Fabulous. All right. So uh, as we go on, first off, I'm assuming everybody I've, I was at the event uh, over the weekend. So everybody knows who I was. I can see some of you. So just so I know I've still got you uh, there. Go like that. So I know you're there. Fabulous. All right. So uh, I can see that, like I said, I'm going to yak for a little while, share with you guys some things and then uh, I'm going to open it up for questions. <laughs> Somebody says here is that Andrea Wheeler says we want more biatch. <laughs> Thanks, Andrea. Uh, okay, so so first off, I'm assuming everybody had a great time and made it home from the event. And uh, congratulations! I heard it was an amazing uh, uh, event. After I left, I did my part, and then I left, and I heard it, it went even higher. So um, I'm waiting to hear more about it. And hopefully some of you guys will share something about it. And so the purpose of this call is really to follow up with you and share with you and give you another couple things to do and just kind of reiterate some of the things that we talked about at the event. And when I first started, um, I said that I was really happy and glad to be back. And I was because it had been some time since I'd worked with the group. And I just want you to know. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago, and I don't know what the numbers are now, but about a year, a little about a year and three months ago was my last uh, event that I did with Proven. And then since then, you guys have tripled in size, tripled. So congratulations to everybody. And then obviously your outcome is to geometrically grow even further. So I'm going to answer a question that I got asked a lot at the event. And the reason I'm going to answer this question is it has a lot to do with what I want to talk to you about today. And the question was, Joseph, what was the name? Because I shared with you guys that I don't teach theory. In other words, if I'm going to talk about health, I better be healthy. If I'm going to talk about money, I better be wealthy. If I'm going to talk about whatever, you know, I have to walk that talk. That's just the way that I'm, I'm built. And so 
um, I mentioned at the top of the event that I had uh, a, a pretty uh, great career doing network marketing or uh, MLM or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to share with you a real quick story of how that came about. I'm not going to share with you the name of the company because it's irrelevant, but I want you to listen real close to uh, what I did, why I did it, how I did it, and how uh, the things that I taught you will benefit you as well. So again, I'm not going to mention the company, but I will say this. They are still one of the, one of the, the uh, top companies in uh, the nutrition field. And so it came about this way. I, like most people, had uh, a bit of a bloody nose, bloody lip from uh, in, uh, MLM network marketing a long time ago. I tried it when I was quite young, you know, in my teens, actually, and failed. And, uh, and I didn't like it because it involved me having to go up and, and talk to people and talk to my friends and all those things. And I didn't like it, so I, I, uh, I failed at it. And, and again, the company, that particular company at the time is irrelevant, but that, uh, I kept that stigma about me for many, many years, all the way up till uh, 90, uh, 1998. And in 1998, some of you know this, that uh, I do something called, I'm an ultimate performance specialist. And what that is, kind of a high-end life coach, if you will. And uh, when I say high-end, uh, because of my speaking schedule, my, my uh, background and everything, I don't take on very many people. And the ones that I take on are, uh, to this date, are, let's just, uh, you know, Grammy Award winners, um, Academy Award winners, movie stars, people that you would know, uh, sports figures and so on and so forth. And I charge a lot of money. And at that time, this was, uh, like I said, 98, my fee for the year was a quarter of a million dollars. For the year and i'm going to meet with you one time a month and we're going to talk back in those days we talked and faxed because there was the internet uh, wasn't really what it is now some of you remember faxes and so a gentleman approached me and uh he was in a network marketing company and he asked me to coach him and i told him okay i will you know here's the deal it's going to cost you this much money at the time the guy was only earning a quarter of a million dollars a month a quarter of a million bucks a month. And back then, that's when, I mean, not obviously now that's still a lot of money, but that was a whole lot of money. And so it was going to cost him, like I said, a quarter of a million dollars. Here's my terms. And here's my terms. Number one, you got to do what I say. Number two, if you don't do what I say, you know, I'm done. I'm not going to coach you. And then number three, don't talk to me about network marketing. I don't want to hear it. I don't believe in it. I'm I, blah, blah, blah. So uh, his outcome, as we sat down, his outcome was to go to $350,000 a month within three years. And so we set up our goals and all those things and everything. And long story short, he hit that goal in a year and a half. And now, just so you know, he earns literally over a million dollars a month uh, in that particular company. And I'm saying this because I want you to know, this is the kind of money that is available in this company as well. Okay, and I want you to know that. So if that floats your boat, that's great. If $100,000 a month floats your boat, if $20,000, I just want you to know the, the, the broad spectrum of, of, uh, of earning potentials. So anyway, the reason I share that with you is throughout that year and a half's time, um, he stuck to his word. And I, and I told him, I'm not looking to make a friend. You know, I'm here as your coach, your mentor. I'm going to say things to you just like you guys that you might not like, that you might uh, uh, disagree with, but, you know, it's your choice. So anyway, he never he never talked to me about network marketing or tried to recruit me into his company. But the one thing he did do, he was really smart, was he'd always show me his checks every month. It would go up fifty thousand, you know, you know, so on and so forth. He'd show me his checks, and uh, and so that you know that was really great. I, you know, I make a great living and all those things. But um, there was one day he came to me and he and he calls me coach. He goes, coach. He says, you know, I, I really want to thank you for what you've done for me and my family. Blah, blah, blah. And he says, but I got a question for you. He says, you know how you're always going on and on about you don't teach theory? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you tell people that you don't do and you won't teach people something that you don't do yourself. And I go, yeah. And, and he goes, if I'm not mistaken, don't you talk to a lot of network marketing companies? Because I do, you know, and, and at the time I was doing, I do keynote speeches and I, you know, that that's, was part of the thing I do. And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, how can you do all of these seminars and talk to these people about network marketing when you've never done it yourself? 
<laughs> and it was like, you know, I didn't have an answer for it. And, you know, my excuse was, well, because I'm not teaching them how to do network marketing, I'm teaching them personal development. And he goes, yeah, but they're doing network marketing. And so we went back and forth and I went home and I thought about it and I thought, okay, well, very long story short, I said, I, I at least uh, need to understand it. So I gave it, I gave it a year and I said, within a year, um, um, I'm going to do this for one year and see what happens just so I can get the education. Very long story short, um, I'm just I'm trying to shorten the story, but very long story short, I rose to the top of that company's uh, uh, marketing plan, if you will, in two and a half years. And once I got started in it, I took a look at it. And here's the reason why. Here's what I want to share with you. Here's the reason why I did it. Number one was because I didn't want to teach theory. Number two, I wanted to prove that what they say was true. And that is that you could work it part time and still climb the ladder and very, very quickly. And then number three, I wanted to make sure that it was true that, that they all say that you could work it for a while. X amount of time and then walk away from it and still have a residual income. And so I went after it and I want you to know, I never ever got in front of a group of people cause I'm in front of people all the time and, and, and marketed myself. I literally did what I expected others to do because if I could do it, you know, cause I got a big database of people, then that's one thing, but not everybody has that. And you know, this about this type of business, if you do it, but you don't duplicate yourself, you're going to fall flat. So I literally, and in those days, sound like the wise old sage, there was no internet really. And how we did it was we put flyers on cars and ran ads in newspapers and put up signs and things like that. And I literally got out on the streets and did that. I cut the holes, cut the fingers out of gloves so my fingers would be free and I'd put flyers. I did exactly what I expected other people to do. And so, uh, make a long story short, got to the top of that company's uh, 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 marketing plan and I retired. It's been about uh, seven and a half years. No, no, no. Almost nine years ago now. And I still have, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go into the figures, but a very, very decent uh, residual income that comes in. Now, the reason I share that with you guys is this. My ace in the hole that allowed me to duplicate myself were three things, and I want you to write this down. Write it down. That's why I had you get the notes. Number one, my personal development. My personal development. Meaning, even though you know, I, I'm a psychologist, I have all this stuff, I still needed to grow as a person as well. And I'll tell you how that happens in a second, okay? My personal development. Number two was imbuing, or just write it down, was teaching them to do personal development. So mine was, first was my personal development. Number two was their personal development. And again, I'm going to clarify this stuff here in a second. And then number three, just write these words down, event to event. Okay. Now, and these, this is the gold, guys. And, and, and by the way, I don't know how much time I have, so I'm just going to yak. And then I told you 10 minutes, I'm going to yak, but you know how I am. And um, if you get sick of it, just go like that, you know, just stop me. Okay. But you won't cause you're going to love this. Cause this is golden what I'm telling you here. And so what that meant was my personal development was I was always, and still do by the way, I'm always looking to, to grow myself, to be a better person, to do, to, to get, you know, the last thing that I did with you guys was I took you through a process where I had you meet the younger you. And I did that on purpose so that you could see how awesome you are. Okay. And, and, you know, I just, just in, and I, I want to thank everybody so much for the, the love that you, you uh, shared with me after leaving that. And, and, and even now, uh, some of the emails and things on Instagram. And by the way, if you haven't joined me on Instagram, just go, please join me on Instagram. I am Joseph McClendon. Please join me there because I'm always going to, it's not just a regular account. I always put up uh, things that about personal development on there. Put some great stuff up today. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the feedback that I've gotten from everybody that and the other exercises, 
that feeling that you have will only continue to have if you do those three things I'm talking about. Number one, develop yourself constantly, whether it's reading, whether it is exercises like the ones that I gave you. I gave you two specific exercises, the stop technique and your uh, and your identity statement. You were, uh, they were calling it your I am statement. Um, I believe I am statement or I forget the name of it, but, but, but those are exercises because it's not what you know, it's what you do that gets the result. And those things are going to grow. You remember that because you can walk away from the seminar saying I had a great time and there's going to be residual. Obviously that is, otherwise you wouldn't be on the call, but it's what you do when you continue to do those exercises that make the difference in, in that first thing. It keeps you growing. It keeps making you remember, not dismember, remember what you learned. And everybody agreed that while we were in that room, all of us, and go like this, if you still agree with me, that while you were in that room, you felt bulletproof, you felt unstoppable, you felt like everything was going crazy. The way you, do, you, the way you keep that going in your life is that you do these exercises. I didn't make those willy-nilly. I did those for a reason because I want that to live inside of you. So the first step is always grow yourself. Constantly grow yourself. Constantly look to improve. Not what's wrong. Look, how can I improve? What can I make better? Okay. The second thing is their personal development. In other words, I always encourage that I'm doing it right now. I always encourage, I give people books. I say, read this, do this, go on, you know, and as I'm saying to you, I'm not saying this for any other reason. And this is what I do. It's my calling. And I told you why. I'm always giving away information. Instagram is the, the quickest and newest way that I can do it now. So if you want to put your peeps on there as well and just say, hey, you're going to get some great stuff here. It's not going to be just, you know, hey, I, you know, sometimes it is here. I'm at this 15,000 person event or things like that. But for the most part, every day, go look. And there's always something that's going to help people grow. So encourage them to do the same thing for you as, as you're doing. And then the third thing encompasses both of them. And how I grew my business, the biggest, the quickest, the fastest, was going from event to event to event to event. Now, here's the question for you. Go like that if this is the truth. How many of you wish that you would have had more of your team at that event last weekend? Go like that. Okay. Everybody. Okay. Why? Here's the reason why. Because you want them to get the juice too. You want them to come away feeling the way you felt. And then that way, it's not up to you to do it. You leave it to the event to do it. And so my mentor, who again, now makes a million bucks a month. My mentor was really smart. And he goes, Joseph, you don't have to know everything. You just get those people to go to the event. You go to the next event. You go to the next event. You stretch yourself. And sometimes it was. You stretch yourself for time, for money, whatever it is. Because whatever you put out is going to come back 50 fold. However, any people you put in that event and they get the message to bring their people in it and it just, it just grows like crazy. So whatever was, was put out to you, whatever the next event, I don't know, guys, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you because I'm in and out and I'm going to, I'm working it, it, with your blessing. I'm working with Brian to be more of a figure in this company to coach you and mentor you and work with you. Go like that if you would like that. Because I got more stuff than you guys can possibly imagine. And so I'm working on that. But I don't know what the next event was, is coming up. But whatever it is, if you didn't do it at that event, then you call up, you know, you're upline or whomever, and you go, I'm putting it on the line. I'm going for it now. And then you encourage your people to do it as well. And then the burden is off of you to inspire, motivate, and empower them and to teach them. Because then they get in the flow, they get in the system. And what I mean by that is this, I, you know, real simple, true story, but metaphor. Um, my son, when he was like two and a half, maybe three years old, I would bring him with me to uh, my seminars every once in a while so he could see what his dad does. And, you know, he was, it was, he had maybe two and a half years old, so he wasn't really walking that well, but he was, he was walking already. And so we were at the hotel. Uh, and it, the, the event was in Los Angeles and we were at the hotel. And what happens with me at these very large events is I have a security team of people and they come and pick me up in the, in the hotel in the morning. Um, and I get in the car, I drive over to the event with them and then they escort me in uh, backstage and all that stuff. So I had my son with me and they pick me up in the morning. We're going down, we come down the elevator. And if you have kids, you know how fascinated they are with pushing the buttons on the elevator. And so I let them do that. We come downstairs. And, and we're walking through the lobby 
with the security team. And all of a sudden, my son grabs my hand, and, and, and he's not saying anything, but he's looking. And it's the very first time he's ever seen an escalator. And so he's looking at it. And if you think the elevator was exciting to him, the escalator was like Disneyland. And so he's pulling me, he wants to go on. So um, I say to him, I go, we don't have time right now. But when we come home, when we come back tonight, we'll do it. And so he put up a little bit of a squawk, but he was cool with it. Went and did the event. And uh, well, I was with you guys probably on stage eight hours that day. But in my other events, I'm on stage like, you know, 12, 15 hours at a time. In this particular time, I don't think it was that long, but he had already gone to sleep. And it was, you know, close to midnight. And um, he was, you know, out cold. And I'm carrying him, you know, into the uh, hotel. We get out of the hotel. And I, you know, I forget about the escalator, but uh, he does it. He wakes up and he's, you know, how little kids, you know, they get the stiff back thing and you can't even carry him. And he wants to go to the escalator. So I think, okay, it's cool. So we walk over to the escalator. He sees the escalator. It's going up like that. And he's looking at it and he's looking at me and he's looking and he wants to get on, but he's afraid. And he's looking at it. He's looking at me and I go, come on, let's go. And I'm trying to pull him and I'm going to step on it with him. He won't do it. And so I go, okay, watch problem. And I step on the escalator and I ride it to the top. And then I turn around and I come back down and I ride it back down. And he's just giggling his little head off. And so I go, watch again. I get on, I ride to the top and I ride back down. And I said, are you ready? And he's shaking, but he's happy and everything. He's scared. And he's sitting there and he comes right to the edge. And I go, son, just step on and everything's going to be okay. And I said, I'll step with you. We'll just step on and everything's going to be okay. And he's sitting there and he's pulling on my finger. And I can tell he's like close to tears, but he's excited as well. And so I was patient with him. And then I said, are you ready? And he goes, yeah. And we both stepped on and he rides it all the way up to the top. And he gets to the top and you know me, and shaking his ass and celebrating and things like that. And he's just giggling his head off. And then I go, okay, are you ready? And we get back on the other one to ride back down. And the next time you're still a little bit nervous, but now he steps on and now he's giggling his head off. We get down to the bottom. Now we get to the bottom. Dad's done. I've been working for 10 hours, 12 hours. Dad's done. I'm ready to go. But do you think the kid was done? Yes or no? No. We rode that thing for another 15 minutes up and down and up and down and up and down. So the reason I say that to you, it's a metaphor for life. And that is this. Even though you might not understand everything, even though it might be scary, even though looking that far out ahead, you know, for the cost of something or the time or the travel and stuff like that, it doesn't necessarily make sense what I'm saying. Now, you know, I'm sure you're smart enough to figure out that it does. But once you step on the escalator, that's what this whole business is like. It truly is. Once you step on the escalator, you just ride it to the top. And you just keep on doing it over and over again. And you get your people to do the same thing. And what that means is, does my son or even I have to know exactly how an escalator works? Yes or no? No. All I got to do is get, a, is get on. And in this whole system with this company, with this type of business and so on and so forth, you don't have to know everything. It's all done for you. You just step on the escalator. So those three things, again, continue to personally develop yourself. yourself. I'll be there for you, you know, in whatever way that I can. Number two, encourage your people to do it. Number three, get on the escalator. It's from event to event to event. And what happens is this. My first events, I maybe had three people. Next event, 20 people. Next event, 150 people. Next event, 1,000 people. And, and I just teach them the same thing over and over again. Go like that if that makes sense. Okay? So let me recap everything that I've just talked about, and then I'm going to take some questions. Uh, and that is this. Number one, do the exercises that I gave to you. And they are the stop techniques. I gave you the schedule of it. Set your clock. Set your... your uh, your um, your uh, um, um, alarm on your clock on your phone to remind you to do them. If you've not been doing it, guys, you're wasting time. You're wasting time not doing the very first thing I did. I said there. Number two is your your identity statement. 
you know, if you get, get out in the field, yell at the top of your lungs. If you can't do it that, yell it in your car, do whatever it takes, okay? The third thing is those three things that I talked to you about. Number one, constantly developing yourself. Number two, constantly developing other people. Number three, get it into your head that all you have to do, all you have to do is go from event to event. If you've not enrolled in the next event, do it. You know, have that conversation with whomever, do it. Because the money and the time that you spend right now will come back tenfold. You don't, you may not get this yet, but this is even, even at the exponential growth that the company has already gone. This company is really, really young, less than four years old. And so imagine it out five years from now. Imagine what will happen. And you are in the very beginning. You're in the fledgling part. And that's where the real money is made. Got it? Go like that if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So let me see um, if I got any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys are awesome. I can't believe how many times I see the word bitch in here. Okay. Uh, here's a question. Uh, did you love our community? Absolutely. I wouldn't be there if not. Okay. Okay. Uh, so excited. Let me see. Okay. All right. Okay, here's here's a great question. Okay. And this I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but you guys know me by now. And remember, well, first off, let me read the question. The question is, what is the most profound affirmation that you say to yourself in the morning? Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you the simple one, and then I'll give you the long one. And by the way, it's not an affirmation. All right. So I want you guys to get this. An affirmation is just saying something over and over again, okay? And there's a concept called an incantation. An incantation is an affirmation that is spoken with enthusiasm, excitement, and joy with physical movement, okay? And so th there's a difference because that sends it into your nervous system, okay? So the simple one that I say every morning is I wake up every morning, I'll find a mirror, put a smile on my face, and I say, I already taught it to you guys, I freaking rock. And the reason I say that is because, the more you, and I say it with enthusiasm, shaking my ass and doing things like that, because guess who believes that? Me. It's not that I'm yelling it out to the world or being arrogant or anything like that. I'm saying it to myself, and my nervous system takes it in and believes it, okay? I have an identity statement like I gave you guys. So my identity statement goes, and it's a little bit longer, uh, and, and it's, it's a little bit different than I said to you guys, but you can refine yours. I want you to keep the one that you have for six months and refine it. But mine goes like this. I, Joseph McClendon III, am a God-guided expression of health, wealth, happiness, and joy for myself and virtually everybody that I have the privilege of touching their lives. I believe that life is exactly what you dare to make it, and fortune favors the bold. And I was put on this earth to to boldly step up and dare to make my life and other people's lives magnificent. And then I shake my ass and then I celebrate like crazy. Okay. So I do what I'm telling you to do. The reason I don't have to look on a piece of paper to say that is because I say it over and over again and I, and I believe it. So the one that you have is magnificent. You felt good. You want to make that to who you really are in it over and over again with enthusiasm, with uh, uh, moving your body. Okay. Next, we appreciate you. Let me find another question. This is actually pretty cool, moderating or, or yeah, moderating at this myself. Okay. All right, chat, chat, chat. What was my takeaway from more uh, from the event? I had several of them, but I got to be honest with you guys. Um, the biggest takeaway was the love that I felt from from uh, the audience, not for me, but that you have for one another and your willingness to spread that love out there in the world. And I don't say that, you know, to be uh, hyperbolic. I say that because, you know, there's a difference between this group of people. And, and a lot of it is because it's, it comes down from the top. You know, I've known Brian for a long time, and um, that's what he's made of, and that's what he's putting through the, the community as well. So um, that takeaway was the feeling that I get. I do what I do because... Um, because it furthers my path and my goal on this planet, which is to teach more people. And so that's what I felt from you as well. Okay. So let me find a couple more questions here. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we want more, bitch. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, 
me see. I just sent you a message separately. Okay. And by, by the way, guys, if you want to communicate with me, I keep saying it, please join me on Instagram. I'm actually making a community of, I put out two or three little videos a day about, uh, about personal development or, you know, little things. I'm going to make longer ones as well. That's my platform because my outcome, just so you know, is I want to impact the world in a bigger way. Okay. The ramp. Yes, man. we want more bitch. Uh, okay, Joseph, thank you for taking this time. I'm so proud of you. Okay, uh, first off, you guys are awesome, and I'll say to everybody that I can't respond to back to uh, you're absolutely welcome. Perfect, okay. Uh, you know what? I don't see any more questions. It's breaking up a bit. Anyone else? Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, fabulous. Okay, guys, I don't really see any more because you have no idea how much uh, you've helped me. Listen, thank you so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like what uh, it looks like. It says how t H A U T -E -C -O -U T E C O U T. I can't even read that photo. It says to everyone, show up at every event, play full out, rinse, repeat. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. Okay. All right, guys, well, this, this is a slower technique. What's your best tip for getting people to events? Oh, gosh. Uh, my best tip is remember. Remember how you felt uh, at the event. And the question I already asked, how would it be if your people felt that way? You know, you go back and, and at the risk of sounding arrogant, you go back to your people and just say, hey, listen, you know what? We have the most amazing trainer. His name is Joseph McClendon III. He is amazing. <laughs> no. You go there and share them your event as well. You go and tell them, listen, it's simple. All you got to do is come to the event. Don't complicate it. All you got to do is just get there. Show them some of the videos. Show them what's going on. Show them the checks. Show them whatever. Okay. Uh, it's going on. It's button by Tuesday. Okay. Uh, how to deal with family that doesn't share your enthusiasm. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's really good. Look really close. Watch this. Smile, say thank you, and keep going. The best way to deal with them is success. It truly is. Shake it off. I told you how to interrupt your pattern. Shake it off and just keep going after it. Because everybody that is successful at anything always has had naysayers. Always. There's not a one person that I've ever met, self-included, that hasn't had people that go, you're crazy for doing this. This is stupid. You're going to fail at this. You know, those people are taking advantage of you or whatever comes out. Everybody. But you, but that's the thing. It's not, it's not that you're going to show them. It's just that you just do it and happily success, become successful. And then guess what? A great deal of those people are going to go, because it, it did with me and it always has. People go, Joseph, how do I do it? And they're the same people that used to beat me down. So um, you know, there's an old saying and it says success is the best revenge. Don't look at it as revenge. You know, success is the best gift that you can give to other people as well. So do it and, and you know, be the example for them. Okay. Constant affirmation. So you have everyone. Okay. This thing backed up. Okay. It says, do you have a recording or something to purchase and visualization that took us through? No, I don't. Um, the, 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 you don't need it repeated until you come to the next event. I'll do it again at the next event. You don't, it's just something I want you to live with. Okay. Okay. Uh, question is how do you suggest digesting and incorporating as much amazing stuff in the information that was much, oh, I wonder how it would be to advise to proceeding, processing a lot of the information. That's really great. First off, just do the exercises. I said, you only got, you know, I said for 10 days. The next thing is, is just go chunk by chunk. You got a workbook of stuff, go through, you know, and don't try and ingest everything. Go one at a time and just remind yourself. When you look at it, it's not that much stuff. It truly isn't. You know, things I had you write down is just three things. Actually, two things. Stop technique and identity. 
not giving you just, you know, the rules for, for growing further faster, but just take it, you know, that old saying about how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. Get your manual and do this page today and remember what you did. Put it down, celebrate, put it into action and go on. Okay. How did you get people to events? I already told you is I just give them my enthusiasm and just tell them, you tell them the same story that I just told you about the escalator or anything. Just listen. Here's the name of the game. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Just come to the event. When you get to the event, it's going to blow you away. Okay, next. Uh, book news. Yeah, my new book is called Awesome Sauce, and it will be out on the 24th of, uh, of November. Okay. And by the way, guys, I want to share something with you. And it is another reason. I keep hyping this, but I want you to do it. I uh, The reason I left uh, when I did, I had to get back uh, very quickly because – the following day after I got back and I had to prepare for it, um, I, and I do this quite often, is I, I uh, do guest uh, appearances on different TV shows. And um, there's a show called The Doctors that I, I'm on. Um, and, and so I did, I live in, in uh, Newport Beach, which is about 45 minutes from San Diego where I was. But anyway, make a long story short, I, I did the, the, uh, Channel 5 News, and they offered me a regular spot on there. You know, I put it on my Instagram, and I asked people's opinion, should I take it or not? And I don't know that I'm going to, uh, but it, again, my whole outcome is to further this whole thing, because I'll remind you of a saying that I said uh, at the event, and it's that those of us that dare to dream while the rest of the world is having a nightmare, we're not only going to uh, inherit and create the wealth and the happiness and all the things that we want in our lives. But the greatest part about it is, is that we are going to be shining examples for other people to do the same thing. And so this is my opportunity to be able to touch more people. Um, and so, and again, you know, I want to share those things with you because everything that I teach, you know, now Instagram and Facebook are the things, but I can't, be in your life as much as I would like to, or maybe you would like me to be. So this is the best way I can do it. So please write this down. I am Joseph McClendon. Okay. Or you can just search me at Joseph McClendon. And, um, and I have a very special way that I do it on there. You'll go on there and you'll, and you'll, you'll see, and if you just click on my profile picture, you can, there's three different options there. You can go and I'll send you stuff personally. Um, or a reminder to let you know if I put something out and everything like today, I put something out uh, today about something called, um, uh, 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 oh, it was called um, subsequent uh, food density. And it is about the, uh, uh, um, how, how food dissolves in your system. And I also, I put personal development stuff out like crazy all, all the time as well. The next question, do you have a recording somewhere? No, no, I don't. I already did that. Do you drink uh, Keto's? You know, I do. Um, and um, uh, let's see, what's the best social network to grow your business? I don't know uh, what that is, uh, um, honestly, because in that you, you work with the organization because I think there is a system that, 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 uh, that uh, Prove It is setting up. So I don't know the answer on this best for that. What is your best social network? To, I'm sorry, what is your Instagram? I already told you I am joseph mcclendon uh you'll find me there okay next time i need to get a picture yes i would love to do that okay uh, yes, my question i taught my six-year-old to stop techniques since she had a bad day in school yesterday and she told me she did it today thank you <laughs> okay what do you read or listen to personal development uh gosh i should have i should have done this from my library store upstairs. I literally have a wall of, of books. So I read lots of different stuff, uh, you know, and I write a lot. Okay. Could you recommend uh, your top five best personal development books uh, and podcasts? Um, you know what? My top five books, uh, the first one would be definitely Think and Grow Rich. Uh, next would be uh, Tim Ferriss's Four Day Work Week. Uh, next would be um, my friend, my, uh, my, my partner, uh, Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within. Next would be my, uh, uh, the book I, if some of you have it, it's called Get Happy Now. It's the uh, last book that I wrote. And then the, the, uh, the fifth book would be the one that's not out yet. It's called Awesome Sauce. Uh, and so those would be my top five. Okay, I'll, I'll take just three more. Okay, 
what do you do about ketones or ketosis? What do uh, what do I know about it? I probably know way way less than you do. Okay, so that's a longer question. Okay, how do we have more diversity in our events in our community in race, age, and social status? You know, that's a great question, and and the answer to that is it's up to you to get out and spread the word. And remember, you don't have to be. Um, anything more than yourself. It's just, it's a numbers game. It truly is. It doesn't, you know, if you don't have diversity in your life, go make diversity in your life. You know, find other friends, go, you know, right now, I mean, it can be as simple as, as going, you know, walking up to somebody and just saying, Hey, I, I mean, let me get, I'll tell you guys something. I, here's how I used to great create business. Um, because I was bound and determined to every day, uh, create a new customer. And I would just ask people, Hey, how is your health? And they would go, well, why do you ask? And I go, well, I'm just curious, you know, are you happy with where you are? And they go, no, or yes, or leave me alone. Either way, you know, I got an answer. If they said, no, I, you know, it's not great. And I go, great. Well, are you serious about changing it? And they go, well, yeah. And I go, what have you tried before? And they go, well, I tried this. And I go, how did that work for you? But anyway, that was just my spiel. And then I just say, give me your card. I'm going to call you. And then I call them. In the beginning, I would call my mentor and I go, what do I say? You know, and there's lots of different trainings. And, and we're, we're putting together a, a more substantial uh, training group, but uh, that was it, okay? Uh, it says, you freaking rot. Totally give me a mindset, okay? Uh, yeah. so, so, again, I would just get out there and do it. Okay, last question. <laughs> Somebody says, dogs don't bark at parked cars. Keep moving. <laughs> Uh, here's one. Okay. What if you're married to a naysayer? Smile and do what you got to do. You know, they're going to keep saying naysay till you show them the check. And remember, the, any challenges that you have, God's uh, challenges are God's way of testing you to make sure you really want what you want. You know, they really are. So, you know, I've, I've seen it a ton of times. And that person stops naysaying when you start bringing home the money. That's the way the, that's the way it works, period, across the board, okay? Okay, so listen, I got to go. I've taken up way more time than I, than I said I would. I told them I was going to talk for 20 minutes. It's 45 minutes now, so I don't know if I'm pissing them off or not. So I'll leave you guys with this. I'm going to recap. Number one, do your stop techniques. Number two, do your, uh, your um, identity statement with enthusiasm, guys. I promise you, as you do it, things will change. Uh, and then uh, your identity statement. And then uh, the three things I talked about, make sure you're doing personal development. It's what you're doing right now. Stay plugged in. Make sure you're encouraging other people to do personal development. And then the last thing is get to the next event. I can't stress that enough. I cannot stress that enough. Listen, last, uh, second to the last thing I'll tell you. My, I've, I've got lots of mentors, lots of them. And I'm, I practice what I preach. I'm constantly going to seminars and workshops and constantly uh, I'm learning from people. And so I'm privileged to have mentors like like uh, Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra and, you know, in the past, Norman Schwarzkopf and uh, General Colin Powell. And the list goes on and on. I got tons and tons of guys uh, that teach me things. And one of the things that they, uh, that they uh, uh, all of them will say is, listen, stay plugged in. Stay plugged in and keep yourself plugged in as well. Constantly growing. So last thing is this. This is my saying. Please take it to heart that life is exactly what you dare to make it, and fortune favors the bold. And whether you're dealing with a, a, a skeptical spouse or whether you're dealing with physical challenges, whatever it is, you got to boldly step up and dare to make your life magnificent. I love you guys. I really look forward to, to talking to you again very, very soon, at the very least at the last next